The company Friday Pickleball recently advertised a Black Friday sale where they offered two thermal form paddles for $99. This is the same company you might have seen in ads with these colored designs added to the face of their paddles. That deal is now prolonged indefinitely with this channel's discount code PBMED. This channel was actually given access to two slightly better deal extensions, and the easiest way to access those are through the links in the description with those deals embedded. You can select the link for two paddles for $95 or one for 10% off. You'll notice if you click the link for two and put two paddles in your cart, it will initially come up as that original $99 deal, but when you reach final checkout, you'll see that price of $95. Or alternatively, you can use the other link for 10% off one paddle. But that raises the question, can essentially a $50 paddle perform with good quality and playability aspects. I've gone ahead and done the legwork so that I can return and report and let you know if I think that that's true. But one safe thing about Friday Pickleball is they do offer a 99 day money back guarantee, and to my knowledge, that may be the most generous period of time a company has offered for you to actually play with the paddle and still return it if you don't like it. The exact details of this return policy were a little bit hard to nail down on the website, so I spoke to the admin at Friday Pickleball to confirm, and they did confirm to me that up to 99 days, no matter how much you played with it, you can return the paddles for a full refund of the cost of the paddle, you just have to ship it back in yourself. I've gathered all the need to know specifications for this paddle into one place, and I'll share the swing and twist rate that I calculated, as well as the RPMs that I found when trying to apply spin on the ball. I'll talk about the playability, give you my summary, and I'll share who I think is more likely and who I think is less likely to like Friday Pickleball paddles. And if you like the review, don't forget to subscribe. The Friday paddles measure 16.5 by 7.5 inches long, and they come in a hybrid shape with those smooth, round upper corners, comparable to most other standard hybrid shapes. These come in the 16 millimeter version, they're thermal formed with foam edge injection, and they're USA PA approved. These paddles are made of carbon fiber with a sand blasted finish. One of the first things I notice is that it definitely doesn't have that plush feel you'd expect from a raw carbon fiber paddle, but it doesn't feel like it has overt, like just grit added to the surface, like some paddles of old that would wear out quickly. So I dug through my Boneyard collection of pickleball paddles to see if I could find something to compare it to. And what I did end up doing is arranging a small spectrum of paddles, including a Gen 2 carbon fiber, a Gen 1 raw carbon fiber, the Friday paddle, and an old decommissioned Engage Ultra that was kind of known for the grit wearing out over time. You can kind of hear a difference in the sound when you run your hand across the face of these paddles. The pitch correlated with how the paddle surface felt, with the highest pitch being the Gen 2 RAT, and the lowest pitch being the Engage Ultra with that added grit. The Friday paddle landed between the Rock Auburn Fiber PHD and the Engage Ultra, this gave me confidence that it would likely last longer than the Engage Ultra, but still left a question in general about how long that surface texture would last. At this point, I'd been playing with the paddle for about a week and hadn't noticed a reduction in surface texture or spin. So I sat for some time and rubbed a pickleball against the face, and then I used some extensive eraser treatment, and then I inspected the surface. You can see some streak marks there, but overall the texture appears to be intact and I didn't feel much of a difference. I also took a before and after picture just to compare, and I really don't see any difference. Obviously this doesn't conclusively rule out that the grit is going to wear out, but what I do think this says is it's probably not likely to wear easily, and looking online to check the reviews, I didn't see any mention of wear and tear on the grit. And in fact, the reviews were so highly rated that some of the few low star ratings that I did see were people who submitted low reviews to see if their review would actually show up. They have a 5.5 inch handle. It come with that tennis style grip with those small ridges for your fingers to slide into. I actually really liked this grip and I didn't end up feeling the need to add an over grip to it. The last paddle I had with a grip like this was the Lex CG3. And just to see how an over grip would do on it, I did add one and it went on and felt just fine. I also took off this grip to inspect the handle, and you can see the construction and the thermal forming process goes all the way down through the handle to fully encapsulate and cover the polymer like you'd expect a true thermal form paddle to do.
These are offered in the 8 to 8.3 ounce range, with most paddles being up towards that 8.3 ounce mark. While this is a pretty standard weight range, I would say the average of 8.3 ounces is a little bit more on the moderate side. And while some paddles tend to get a lot more head heavy as they get up in weight, just depending on how their paddle design distributes that weight, the swing weight was maintained at 121 and twist rate at 6.11. And while that's a little higher than average for a hybrid shape paddle, it tells me the weight is distributed pretty well, and I found that it was still pretty maneuverable in play. Using a sort of combination of the methods they use at Pickleball Studio and those shared by the best pickle paddle, I'll put that link in the description if you're curious, with an average of 0.29 seconds per revolution at 1 tenth real time speed, the RPMs came out to 2068. This definitely registers in our high range of spin category, and this was felt by me on serves and drives especially. And in terms of playability for spin, I'd give the Friday paddles an A. Overall power was another strength of the Friday paddles, it made it tempting to drive and hit the ball hard a lot. This will get a high rating for me with the caveat that I am a roughly 190 pound adult male and that 8 to 8.3 ounce range wasn't too bothersome for me. And though this isn't too different from an industry standard weight, a lighter weight isn't offered so folks who prefer a lighter paddle may have a harder time generating that same swing speed. And this is probably the only reason why it gets an A- for me instead of an A for power. I thought the pop was pretty good but not great. When I think of the most poppy paddles that I've played with, there's still probably one more level in between them and the Friday paddles. So in terms of pop, I give these guys a B plus. The inverse of that pop is control, and since the ball isn't super reactive off the face, I thought the control was pretty good. When I think about paddles that are pure control paddles and I never worry about it popping up, like maybe the Vatant Prism Flash or the Rhombus R1.16, there's probably one more level in between them and this as well, like maybe the isocentric, where it has a good control base but retains some of those thermal form features. The Friday paddles are probably in that next tier down where they still have good pop and kind of teeter back and forth between that like A minus and B plus range. And thinking about it in reference to some of those really good control paddles, I give the Friday paddles a B plus for control. In summary, I thought these were all around good paddles with good power and good spin. They've obviously got some cosmetically unique designs, and they have a price that I haven't seen beat to date, with a pretty forgiving return policy. I'll also throw the playability ratings right down here in the corner for a minute as an overall picture of how I thought the paddle played. Besides people who are looking for a paddle that stands out in any one particular way, like maybe a pure control paddle or a pure power paddle, I think the single determining factor for whether or not I would recommend this paddle to a given person is how comfortable you are playing with the paddle in the 8 to 8.3 ounce range. That's not unheard of and there's a lot of paddles that are at that weight, but if you need a lighter paddle, this is the only weight option for this, so you'll just have to take or leave that. That's my take on the Friday Pickleball paddles. Let me know what you think if you've had a chance to play with these paddles, and I hope you enjoyed the review.